If you've ever wondered how to get a YouTube channel monetized, what the most popular and best paying niches are, well, you're not alone. These are some big questions that anyone looking at content creation has, as well as other individuals that are just interested in how creators make money on YouTube. Additionally, in today's video, we're gonna cover a way you can use shorts to grow your channel. And if you stick around towards the end, we're gonna cover one major mistake that a lot of content creators make when it comes to growing their channel and their subscriber base. So let's get to it. So how exactly does a channel get monetized and what are the benefits? Well, YouTube lays out its monetization requirements within your analytics in your creator studio. You can see mine off to the right at the time of filming this video. We're a small channel getting started, but we're on our way there. The base requirements from YouTube are to have 1,000 subscribers and either 4,000 watch hours, this is on long form content, within the last 365 days, or 10 million shorts views within the last 90 days, thus providing a pathway for channels that specialize in more long form content and those that specialize in shorts. So what do you get for monetization? Well, YouTube plays ads on all videos, but you don't get the money unless you're monetized. So for monetization, you start to get a revenue share on the ads that are played on your channel. Additionally, there's a membership area in YouTube that you can interact with and get paid memberships to the channel, but that's a much, to a much lesser extent. Uh, additional revenue sources for a lot of creators include sponsorships. This is where you see them advertising some of those products you always see. This can often be the largest source of revenue for a lot of creators. Additionally, some creators do merchandise, they have affiliate links and other things that can direct you offsite where they earn money in that way. So how exactly does ad revenue work on YouTube? Well, the first thing to know about is the cost per mil or CPM. This is the cost per 1000 impressions that an advertiser is willing to pay. This varies greatly by nation, demographics, topics, keywords, etc. Now, from there, you get the revenue per mil or the RPM. This is what the creator actually receives in terms of money per 1000 views. Now they get a 55% share in the CPM. YouTube takes the other 45%. And now RPM is a holistic metric. So this also includes YouTube premium views who do not see ads, channel memberships, and any other kind of method that they use on the channel to monetize like live streams, donations, etc. So while most creators are very much concerned with the RPM as this is what they're getting in money, the CPM is the real driver here. So before we get into some of the highest paying niches and the highest paying nations, as well as a short strategy and that large subscriber mistake that we alluded to earlier, we're gonna cover some of the most popular niches. So these include ASMR, compilations, educational, entertainment, gaming, infotainment, journalism, reviews, travel, and how to. This is from Adobe as of 2022. There's nothing saying that getting into any of these niches is wrong. It is just that you can expect a lot of competition as these are some of the most popular channel categories out there. So in terms of the highest paying nations, in terms of CPM, which runs into RPM as we discussed earlier, what we see here are some of the most developed economies and nations in the world. Uh, this is what we would expect as advertisers are willing to pay a little bit more for these countries as their populations have more disposable income on average. So advertisers can expect a greater return on their advertising dollars. Now, initially we see Australia is leading off here, which is a little bit interesting to me, I think personally, um, but there's no real shockers on this list. Um, these are all pretty well developed economic areas where the individuals have a fair amount of disposable income and there are larger audiences. So in terms of the best paying niches on YouTube, we have a high concentration of finance slash money making type niches. Uh, this is no surprise that it's a lucrative area, but there's fierce competition between advertisers and companies to draw in individuals. So it makes sense that they're willing to pay kind of a high rate to draw more people in as it's worth the money for them. We also see kind of the lifestyle type advertisers here. Once again, an advertising space where there's a lot of competing products. So it makes sense that they're trying to get in front of as many people as they can. And they're trying to outbid others, which kind of leads to that high CPM that those advertisers are willing to pay. This data is as of 2022. It was compiled by VidXL. Um, they went to a bunch of places on the internet to bring this data in together and they aggregated it. They provide that average CPM and the average RPM. What we've done for comparison on the side as well is we've added in 55% of CPM just to get another metric for what could be the average RPM for a YouTube individual um, based on that average CPM. 
for the most part, pretty close to that average RPM, but it shows that there's variation in the numbers and across large amounts of channels. Now, as we've seen, growing your channel and your subscriber base is important to get monetized, and that 1,000 subscriber mark is necessary to get monetized. Now, the best way of doing this is generally with organic growth, that is attracting subscribers from your long form content. But YouTube Shorts is a new and upcoming way to draw individuals into your channel. Our channel specifically, we post a short every single day, which is a clip of our long form content. This has driven about half of the subscribers that we have on our channel. Now, what is important here is that it is a clip of our long form content. That is the short that that individual is seeing is directly related to the long form content we are producing. So that individual who sees the short is more likely than to actually be interested in our long form content. That starts to lead in to the biggest mistake that we see, which we'll get to right now. So what is this big mistake that we talked about? Well, we alluded to it a little bit when we talked about shorts, but as the prime example today, I'm not gonna ask you to subscribe on this video. Now you're saying, why are you doing that? Well, this video does fit within my general niche of the finance and economics topic. However, I suspect a large portion of the audience today is gonna be creators or individuals interested in YouTube, not necessarily part of my niche. So why is that a problem, you say? Well, if someone were to subscribe to today's video and they're not interested in most of my normal finance and economic overviews that I produce, they're not going to be able to click and they're not going to want to click on videos that I produce in the future. Well, the issue happens is that YouTube generally pushes out your content to subscribers first. If your subscribers don't interact with the content very well, YouTube's algorithm starts to go, hmm, well, maybe this isn't the best content and then doesn't really push it out as well as it should. This can lead to the death of a channel. If you have a bunch of subscribers that are inactive on your content, well, then your content's not really going to go anywhere and you're not going to grow. So that's why this can be a major mistake that a lot of individuals make when they're just starting a YouTube channel. They want to grow that subscriber base fast, 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 which you should, but you need to grow it correctly, generally speaking, organically with individuals that are truly interested in your content. So can you ask for subscribers? Yes and you should. We generally ask on most of our videos, but you need to be conscious of whether you're in your niche and where you're kind of located. If you're located outside, as this video is partially in and partially out, you need to make sure that you're not driving excess subscribers that are going to be a detriment to your channel. So in conclusion, it's okay to ask for subscribers, but you need to make sure that you're maintaining your channel's focus. So thank you for watching today. We hope you enjoyed the video. And as we said, we're not going to ask you to subscribe. If you're new to the channel, you haven't been here before, we encourage you to go look at a couple other videos on the channel. And if you're interested in those, then consider hitting that subscribe button. But make sure that you're actually interested in the content that we're producing. But thank you for your time today and have a great rest of the day.